I didn't know this for 47 years. I didn't know why I had bad relationships and why I had to drink and why I had to use marijuana. People suffer all the time through, through obesity and drug addiction and working too much and anxiety and depression. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Medical issues, cancer, everything. It all comes back to your unmet childhood needs. So if you're suffering, you really don't have to. And I'm living proof of that. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also your host of this show. I'm so excited to have my guest on with me today, who is not only a guest, but also a very, very dear friend. When my guest first got introduced to real estate, all the way back when he was only in ninth grade, he read this book on how to buy houses. Well, in 2002, he bought his very first piece of real estate. And now, about 21 years later, he has bought and sold, are you ready, over 4,000 homes all across the country. So he's a phenomenal real estate investor. But today we're talking about how do you own the real estate between your ears? Well, this is why my guest and friend is so qualified. You see, during his efforts to help his son overcome like really, really extreme anxiety, my friend found out that he himself had unresolved trauma all the way back to his childhood. And that unresolved trauma really caused my friend's subconscious mind to rule his life by a set of lies, by a set of untruths. And one of those lies was he felt um, unworthy and feeling unworthy leads to this feeling of, you know, lack of self-love, lack of self-compassion. Well, these lies and untruths dominated my friend's life. Most of his life cost him two marriages. He lost nine million dollars in business mistakes and he was, you know, an obsessive user of alcohol and marijuana just to escape those feelings amongst many of the other negative things that were going on. I mean, he had it all. I mean, he had the big yacht. He had the big house. He had the luxury vehicle. Yet he just felt empty. He felt unfulfilled. He just really wasn't happy. He didn't feel free. Well, he went through this transformative exercise and ongoing meditation, and this thing called neural reprogramming, and he was actually able to find once again self-love, self-compassion, and no longer does he allow these lies to affect his life. And the reason I wanted to invite my dear friend to come onto the show today is to share with you how he literally and figuratively got born again, and how he's found true freedom. And on today's show, He's going to share with you how he has now created a proven process that will allow you to experience the same thing. Right after this, you're going to meet my dear friend, Brad Chandler. Well, Brad, before we get into your transformation story, I mean, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I guess it was a couple of years ago. You know, you and I are in a mastermind group together. And you told this story about how your life had just changed. I mean, I sat in the mastermind meeting with my, just my jaw was dropped. That first of all, you were willing to take your filter off and share really what you had been through and how you were able to get transformed through it. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to first talk about your real estate background and your experience in raising private money. 
you've raised private money into the millions of dollars. Uh, you did, you've done over 4,000 real estate deals all across the nation. Um, my first question in, in relation to private money, what was your, what did your real estate business look like before raising private money? And when you started raising private money, how did it change your real estate investing business? So Jay, we, uh, we've borrowed and returned hundreds of millions of dollars of private money. I think when I first started, I was going to a bank. And at the time, this was in 2003, um, there were some lenient banks and we were getting 100% financing because they would give us 80% of the, repair, the after repair value. So we had some pretty good financing, but working with banks can be really, really cumbersome. You can only do a certain amount of properties. And as we start to scale, we click quickly outgrew the bank. And I wasn't the finance guy to have all my, well, first of all, banks don't really want to lend on to a company because they look at you as a real estate company and we're really an inventory company. So um, it really, I guess it, w it would have stopped our growth. So I went out to what I do best and I networked and I found someone, someone who had gone to my graduate school, I have an MBA in real estate from U University of Wisconsin, said, hey, I've got these brothers, these high net worth brothers. And those brothers alone over these 19 years, I don't know how many millions and tens of millions of dollars they've made interest off of us, but um, we probably borrowed and returned $250 million just to those two brothers. So it was a game changer for us, for sure. So, so the majority of your private money came from networking, right? So how do you talk to a potential private lender? I mean, and, and what drives that question, Brad, is... I tell people all the time. So my wife, Carol Joy and I, we've got 44 private lenders right now funding our deals. We got about, we don't have 250 million. We got eight and a half million that we sort of churn from house to house to house. And I've never pitched a deal. I've never asked anybody if they wanted to fund a deal. I've never, you know, you know, the traditional, as you know, very well, the traditional way of borrowing money for real estate is you go to the banker, you get on your hands and knees and you put your hands underneath your chin. You go, please fund my deal. Please fund my deal. You know, and you know, in this world of private money, it's like a 180 degree shift. You know, we don't beg. We don't ask. We actually teach people. We put on our teacher hat and teach people about what private money is and you know how they can get high rates of return safely and securely. We teach them our private lending program. And now they're chasing us. You know, since COVID, Brad, I've had more money chasing me than ever before. You know, it's interesting. Prior to COVID, there was $18 trillion in cash in people's retirement accounts. And now since COVID, there's over $31 trillion. There's so much money on the street. But back to the question to you, when you started talking to potential private lenders, what did that conversation sound like? I mean, it was just, it was the truth, right? I, everything about me is the, the truth. The truth shall set you free on so many levels. I would just tell them the truth. I'm like, listen, we're new, but I've been in real estate. I, I have a great real estate re education. I've done some, done some real estate because I was, when I was employed, I did a little bit of real estate. And I would say, look, here's what we do. We spend marketing dollars. We find distressed home sellers where we can buy their house for 20, 30% below market. We're looking for a loan. We'd like a loan for you to fund the acquisition and the renovation. These guys funded the acquisition and the renovation all up front. And I think we were, you know, we started out at 14% in two points. And I think now we're closer to like nine and, and nine and one with them. So that was it. And I can remember what they said back to me, what so many people said back. I don't understand this. This is 2003, 2004. You could put a, a, a handwritten sign in your in your window and say for sale and it would sell in a second. Why would anyone sell their house for 30% below market? And, I was, and my response was, why do people drive without their seatbelts and smoke cigarettes? They just do. <laughs> they just do. So that was the hardest thing for some of these guys to understand when I told them that we bought houses at 30% below market. They're just like blown away. Like, really? Yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, Brad, you and I have come to know each other very, very well. And that's another thing right there that you just shared we've got in common. Um, the thing of it is, is when I first started talking with private lenders, potential private lenders back in 2009, first of all, none of them had ever even heard of private money, never even heard of private lending. None of them had ever heard of self-directed IRAs and how they could transfer retirement funds that they currently have penalty-free, tax-free over to a self-directed IRA company and then loan that money out to our company and get unlimited returns 
tax and penalty free. I've got one private lender, Brad, that in just one year earned $65,000 tax free. And that's because of the type of retirement account that he had that he was, you know, loaning the money out to us. Um, and, you know, we're not talking hard money. Of course, you and I have got a lot of good friends that actually own hard money brokerages. But share with, um, share with our listeners, what's the difference between hard money and private money? Well, I mean, hard or look, hard money is still uh, it's still a bank. I mean, it's not a, it's not an officially FDIC regulated bank, but these people want appraisals a lot of times. They want personal guarantees. Uh, they're going to come inspect the house. Um, they look at comps and stuff. I mean, for for 19 years now, I could sit here and send an email to these brothers and say, "Hey, we're buying one two three Maple Street tomorrow. Uh, we're going to buy it for three hundred. It needs fifty thousand dollars worth of renovations, and it's going to sell for five fifty. And they'll wire us the 350 the next day. There's no appraisals. There's no junk fees. There's no, there's no someone coming to the house and bothering the sellers and doing an inspection. So that's the big difference. Brad, let's go ahead and give our listener a free gift right now. We're talking about private money. We're talking about what Brad just said. You make a phone call, there's no appraisal, uh, there's no inspection, and you've got your private lender wiring the funds for the purchase and for the renovation, if there's renovations, and most of the time there are. I'm so excited about my brand new private money guide, which is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. If you want to get on the fast track to private money and get plugged into private money, and you make the rules, have the money wired to fund your deals in three days, then download my private money guide for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner.com forward slash money guide and get the private money funding your deals where you make the rules and the bank doesn't. Well, Brad, I want us to move right on into your fascinating story. As I said, you know, I, I remember sitting there in the meeting room when you shared this transformative story. So, I mean, you know, I've known you for a number of years now, probably at this point, probably seven years, but you are a totally different person. I mean, you're completely different than when I met you seven years ago, what happened? What happened? That old truth where I started living in the truth. I went to get my son help for his anxiety. And on a Zoom call, the lady said, you have a tick. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, you blink profusely when you talk about your childhood. You, you may have some unresolved childhood trauma. Do you want to come out and work with uh, myself and my ex Navy SEAL husband here in Utah? And I said, sure. Brought my son out there. And in a weekend, really three hours, uh, we went back and looked at my childhood and find that, found the stress and trauma. And when you go through stress and trauma as a child, you form these beliefs and you form these meanings. And so when, some, when a six-year-old has something bad happen to them, what does that six-year-old say? I must be bad. That's their brain doing its job, trying to cope with the stress that they're going, you know, going under. And so what we did in that three hours is we rewrote those untruths. And I came out of there saying, wait. I'm, there's nothing wrong with me. I am enough. I've always been enough. I always will be enough. I don't need to prove my worth anymore. And this heavy weight just got lifted off of my chest. And I started, I, I for the first time, had complete self-love and self-compassion, which allowed me to see the world in a completely different light. So yeah, I am a completely different person. I haven't had a drink. Um, it'll be two years in, in like two weeks. Uh, quit smoking marijuana. Uh, my relationship with my kids is way better. My relationships with everyone's better. And my company's thriving because I no longer am trying to make a bunch of money and create chaos and open new markets and chase every shiny object I see to make a bun bunch of money to prove my worth. I now am focused on how can I make the greatest impact in this on this earth while I'm still here? And that is like, how can I make an impact on my employees? 
my investors, my sellers. And when you shift that focus, ironically, the money comes more than when you focus on the money to prove your worth. But the secret here or the key or whatever you want to call it is I didn't know this for 47 years. I didn't know why I had bad relationships and why I had to drink and why I had to use marijuana. People suffer all the time through through obesity and drug addiction and working too much and anxiety and depression. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Medical issues, cancer, everything. It all comes back to your unmet childhood needs. So if you're suffering, you really don't have to. And I'm living proof of that. You know, Brad, um, comparing how we first met a few years ago, it is so evident that you are living and experiencing and feeling actually like true joy, true joy. Um, you know, you've had a wildly successful business, quote unquote successful. You know, to some people, success means make a lot of money. But as you said just a moment ago, it's not all about making, you know, when you put the money first, you know, does joy really like, you know, follow that? So since you have gone through this transformation beginning two years ago, um, first of all, how long did it take for you to go from stressed out, having to rely on distractions and addictions to just get through the day or get through the night? How long did it take to get free of that? It took me three hours to make an enormous, enormous shift. And then you know, if, if, if this is the spectrum right here, like I'm holding up my hands about a foot away, if this is your life and here, here's where I was and here's where com someone completely enlightened and perfect is, I made this huge jump. I mean, huge jump um, in a matter of hours. And then in the coming weeks and months, uh, really, most of, most of the, the dramatic shift happened in the three hours. And now when I work with clients and I've developed this proven process to do the same thing, um, I see amazing shifts in between that third and fourth hour of working with them. So since you went through this transformation in such a short period of time, a couple of years ago, what does your business look like now compared to what it was like before the shift? Oh, good Jay, dude. It was like co complete chaos for not, I mean, not complete. It was a lot of chaos for 19 years because I was hiring people who were going to try to make me the most money. I brought in CFO after CEO that, that my gut told me was wrong, but I'm like, well, they've built companies. They're going to make me rich. And if they, none of this is conscious, all unconscious. If they're, if they're going to, if they make me rich, I'm going to be okay. Constantly opening new markets when I shouldn't have hiring the wrong people. I mean, it's completely different. Just like I am. Um, the culture has changed. People have seen me on podcasts and said, and literally called me and said, I want to work for that guy. And we've hired, we've hired them. I've gone inside my business and people who, one of the first clients I ever had was a um, virtual assistant of ours. She's 35 years old. She slept two to three hours a night. She had severe migraine. She had severe anxiety. And she had a crappy relationship with her husband and her, um, and her son. In three one-hour sessions, she completely changed. And she'll, it's, she's one of my um, testimonials on my website. She now sleeps eight, eight hours a night. She has no anxiety. And her migraines are gone. So speaking of your website, uh, Brad, your website is www.bradchandler.com, B-R-A-D, Chandler, C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R.com. So since this transformation, what, how much time are you spending on your business now? I spend about three hours a week and we're going to do, uh, we did uh, just around 300 deals uh, in 2022. Wow. Amazing, Brad. And you're now working with clients and sharing with them how they can experience this same kind of transformation. And, and you know, what's really cool is that when you transform yourself or yourself gets transformed, everything else in your world is affected, right? Everything. Your relationships. If, if you're struggling with a relationship with your partner or your wife, the first place you got to look is the mirror. It's never about the relationship you have with the other, other individual. It's about the relationship you have with yourself. So your marriage gets better, your relationship with your kids gets better, your relationship with your business partner gets better, your, your health improves, um, no longer need to drink or, or eat or food or use anything really to cope because there's nothing to cope. Like all of this is made up stress. This is all from these untruths that we've told ourselves since childhood trauma. Our brain did what it should have done back then. But now with this new awareness, we can change what our brain thinks and you can see the, the world in a whole different light. And yes, Jay, everything in my world and everything in your world will change if you decide to take this journey. 
Well, you know, it's, it seems to me that not only joy and fulfillment comes from this transformation, but actually feeling free, right? And, and you know, it, it would seem to me that prior to your transformation, even though you were wildly, quote unquote, successful in business, perhaps you felt like you were in like this freedom. I mean, uh, in this prison, in this prison. And after transformation, you're like really free. So here's my question. How does someone truly get freedom and experience it? Yeah, so there's only one way. No cars, no boats, no women, no fancy dresses. Nothing can bring you freedom. The one thing that can bring you freedom is self-love, self-love and self-compassion. And what does that come from? It comes from untelling these untruths that you tell yourself that you're not good enough, you don't belong, you can't ever get what you want. And so if you ask that question to me two years ago, three years ago, Jay, and you go, do you love yourself? I'd say, well, of course I do. So I developed this self-love quiz because now I know better. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, I have a lot of self-love. I don't care what people think. Ask yourself a few of these questions. Do you have, have you experienced a deeply connected, passionate, intimate relationship with someone you felt safe with? Are you in that right now? Or are you bumping from, from bad relationship to, to the next? Do you find yourself judging others on a regular basis? Do you judge yourself on a regular basis? Do you talk negatively to yourself on a regular basis? Do you find yourself getting super frustrated with small things others may not get irritated over? Do you frequently take things personally and get upset by others' actions? Do you have an addiction of any kind? Do you have self-destructive behaviors? Drink too much, eat too much, drug use, sexual, whatever it is. Do you put others' needs before yours regularly? Do you often feel guilty or ashamed? Are you able to handle criticism from others without getting super upset? If any of these you answer uh, yes to, it shows you that you may lack self-love and self-compassion. And if you do, it's going to affect every area of your life, every area of your life. And I'll email that. If, it, if you want to reach out to me, I'll email that quiz to anyone who wants it, and you guys can take it um, anonymously and for free. Brad, thank you so much. So... If you answered yes to any of those questions that Brad asked you, well, Brad's going to give you his uh, email address. Would you would you like for us to give him bradchandler.com forward slash contact or your email? Which? So my email's there, but it's brad at bradchandler.com. Real easy. <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, hey look, folks, the, the filter is still off. Brad, B-R-A-D, at bradchandler.com. That's C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R, Brad at bradchandler.com. And when they email you, what should they put in the subject line? What are they asking for? Self-love. That's it. Self-love. Self -love. Yeah, and I'll send it to them. Now, Brad, you went through those questions rather quickly because I know you're rather passionate about what you have experienced and you are passionate about helping people transform as well. One more time. Take your time. Share those questions one more time. I, I want our listeners to hear this because I believe, well, let me ask you, Brad, in given your experience, what percentage of the people walking around have experienced what you used to experience? So 83% 80, of Americans identify as not being very happy. So I think it's, I think it's in the 80% plus range. All right, one more time. Let's let's do the self quiz here. Yeah, I love it, man. And as Brad it. and as Brad is sharing this self quiz with you, listen to the questions. If you answer yes to any of these questions, you want to email Brad at brandchandler.com and um, see he see how he could help you. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah. So so I'm reading them again, and there are some of them. So I'm just going to go through them and tell you what that what answer is appropriate. Have you experienced deeply connected, passionate, intimate relationships with someone you felt safe with? If the answer is no, or you experienced it for a month, uh, chances are you don't have self love. Do you find yourself judging others on a regular basis? If you do, don't have self love. Do you judge yourself on a regular basis? If you do, you don't have self-love. Do you talk negatively to yourself on a regular basis? When you make a mistake, are you like, God, you're such a freaking idiot? No, no self-love. Do you find yourself getting super frustrated with small things other th that others may not get irritated over? That's a sign that you've got a lot of like pent-up irritation, sadness, guilt, uh, frustration, unresolved hurt. Do you take things personally and frequently get upset by others' actions? If you do, you're lacking self-love and self-compassion. Do you have an addiction to anything? An addiction to anything means that you don't feel enough, and so you just need to give more of whatever it is, whether it's gambling, sex, drugs, alcohol. You just need more and more and more because you don't feel like you're enough. Do you have self-destructive behaviors, which means 
some of them, not not all of them. Do you drink a lot? Do you do you eat do you eat too much? Do you drug use? Do you have risky sexual behavior? Do you have suicidal thoughts, self injury? Any of those things are obviously pure, pure indicators that you don't have self love. Can you cope with mental pain, fear, or sadness without turning to substances or things to make you feel better? If you need substances to make you feel better, you lack self love. Do you put others' needs before yours regularly? If you do. This is a, I'm not good enough, so I've got to try to get this person to like me to feel better about myself. Do you often feel guilty or ashamed? If you do, that's definitely childhood stress or trauma. And are you able to handle criticism from others without getting super upset? If you're not able to handle criticism, it's another sign that something's wrong internally. Thank you for uh, sharing that, Brad. You know, Brad, I can personally um, relate and remember when I had some serious addictions myself in the past, and I remember asking myself, Jay, what is the emptiness that you're trying to fill? You know, from my own personal experience, when you're, when you're, you know, when someone is like looking for a distraction or they're addicted to behavior, there's some kind of emptiness that is that we're trying to put in there to like you know create some kind of feeling you know we're we're either moving towards pleasure or we're trying to run away from pain and unfortunately i believe those 83% of people that you mentioned are trying to uh, run away or escape from some kind of pain but what is what is that emptiness that people feel that they're trying to fill up with something that can't fill it up. It's usually one of three things, Jay. It's a feeling, and this all comes from how they were che- treated as a child. Their needs weren't met as a child. And when you hear me say trauma, I think a lot of people check out and they're like, well, I wasn't raped. I wasn't sexually molested. Yes, that's trauma. But trauma is also your little sister comes home from the from the hospital and you feel like your parents love her more. So all of every problem in life comes down to unmet childhood needs. And it's always one of three things. You don't feel like you're enough. You feel like you don't belong and therefore you can't connect. And you can't, you feel like you can't get what you want and you can never get what you want. And that's from one of my mentors, Marissa Peer, one of the best in the world. (laughs) Absolutely. So, Brad, when someone reaches out to you at Brad at BradChandler.com, what can they expect? So uh, I put out a personal message every day on freedom and happiness. So if you go to that bradchandler.com forward slash connect, um, contact, excuse me, you can connect with me on any social media. I'm on, all, I'm on all of them. But what I do offer is I offer a 30-minute free free call. Whether you work with me or not is not going to matter to me in terms of you know finances or my life. But working with me could completely change your life forever. So I'm going to help you. Um, Whether you work with me or not, I'm going to help you. So just go to bradchandler.com and schedule a free 30-minute call. If you're suffering in any area of your life in about five, six, seven minutes, if you're open to change, don't call me if you don't want to change. If you really, really want to change your life and you are totally willing to look at things from a different perspective than you have your entire life, I can help you. I can help you be your guide to radically transform your life and be the hero of your own life and your family and your business. To connect with my good friend, Brad Chandler, go to www.bradchandler, B-R-A-D-C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R, bradchandler.com forward slash contact. And there you'll be able to follow him on all of his social media and watch his daily posts that come out. And if you're just sick and tired of feeling the way that you are day in and day out, and you feel like you just don't have control of your life and that, you know, life is running you and you're not running life, you're not, and you're not walking through life in a joyous, uh, fulfilled, well, fulfilled way, then um, take advantage of Brad's uh, free one-on-one to where he can start to help you. You can email him at uh, Brad, B-R-A-D, Brad at bradchandler.com. Subject line, self-love. Just put self-love in the subject line and Brad will reach back out to you. I'll Brad, send, thank I'll you so much you for joining quiz. me. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. No, I was just going to say, I'll send you that self-love quiz. If you want the self-love quiz, I'll send it to you. That's awesome. Well, Brad, I'm going to give you final comments before I thank everybody for joining us. So thanks for having me to begin with. But look, life is really, really, really freaking beautiful. And there is no reason for you to suffer 
to be in pain, to be in bad relationships, to have a business that's in chaos. So I'm living proof. I've developed over these last two years a proven method from literally some of the world's best. And if you're suffering in any year of your life and you want to change it and you don't want to go through weeks or months or years, uh, weeks, that's a five week program, but most therapy, you know, years and years and years, decades, I was in therapy for decades and many of my clients had got nowhere. So if you want radical change and you're open for change and a willingness to look at things from a different perspective, let me help you. And if I can't be the one to help you, I'll certainly pull you in the direction because you deserve to live a free, joyous, happy, peaceful life. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate you so much, friend. Thank you. You too. All right. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Our topic today was a little bit different. How to own the real estate between your ears. And you know, the reason this topic is so important is regardless as to what type of real estate you're doing, what kind of deals you're doing, uh, are you raising private money? First of all, it comes down to that mindset first. But even more importantly, why do we get into business and real estate to start with? It's for the wealth and the freedom, right? Well, you can make a bunch of money, but if you don't have the freedom on the inside where your heart is, then it doesn't matter at all what's going on on the outside. Be sure and contact my friend, Brad Chandler. Thank you so much for joining me here on this episode. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. If you found this episode valuable, please be sure and share it with a friend, your family, your coworkers. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes, touch those dots in the upper right-hand corner and touch follow me. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any notifications of our amazing upcoming episodes. So I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jayconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.